Welcome back to Steve Rob Reviews. As you can see behind me here is some battery chargers, battery maintainers, and uh, memory saver. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about battery chargers and battery maintainers. I'm going to express my own views on the subject. And one thing I'd like to say is what I like to do, well, a lot of people don't agree, and they like to do their own thing, and I just say, okay, fine, everybody can choose what they want. And the number one thing that I find very odd is I'll have people, they call me up and they say, Steve, my vehicle's dead, could you come over and take a look at it? I go over there, and the battery is completely discharged. Uh, I put my meter on it, and it's like maybe three, four volts. At that stage, I say, go buy a new battery. And they say, no, 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 no. I just want you to boost it. <laughs> and by the way, this one here is a booster as well as a battery charger. I want, I want to just boost it and uh, we'll see what happens. And I say, well, I'll tell you what's going to happen most of the time in my experience. When you have a battery that's been discharged that bad and it's not, say, like a, a battery that's under a year old, well, it's pretty well garbage, as far as I'm concerned. But there's a lot of people out there saying, no, 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 we just, I just want to boost it, start the vehicle, and off I go. And I said, okay, but just remember this. The next call you might make is, I got a light on the dash saying alternator. Well, if you've ever boosted a vehicle that's been discharged that bad, well, now your alternator goes full field, charges like at a hundred amps or whatever it's rated for and you could pretty well fry an egg on the top of your alternator and is it worth a hundred dollar battery to fry a five hundred dollar alternator and the labor involved all the work that's involved with it well apparently a lot of people say well yes it is because they just really don't know and when you explain it to them they still really don't care so let's talk about some uh experiences that I've had and I'll show you what I use what I like and what I don't like and what you should do when you want to store your battery over the winter I've got two batteries in there one for my uh, diesel log splitter and one for my daughter's motorcycle I'll show you them but let's get to these ones right here I'll talk a little bit about them and uh, you guys let me know in the comments below whether you like to actually charge your battery up and then start your vehicle or just boost your vehicle and let your alternator do all the work for you. So let's get to this right now and I'll talk about some of the, uh, the units that I have and what I like about them and what I don't. Well let's start off with this one right here. Now this here I've had for many 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 years and I bought this because that was the only thing that most people used on the farm and that was if you take a look at the dial here yeah you've got 6 volt 12 volt at 10 amp 12 volt at 30 amp charge and then you got a boost feature and that I tell you what I've never ran into a vehicle where the boost feature didn't work to uh, charge it up and I like this one the best for a charger compared to these small little ones that are more or less maintainers only and I really don't like these kind anymore. I have them just for backups, for backups, but you know what? They're not very good. And this is what I use here. When you take a battery out of a newer vehicle today, you like to maintain all the memory presets and everything. And uh, you can actually just leave this plugged into this for any extended period of time and it will charge. It'll keep your system charged up so that, well, the vehicle doesn't even know that you've disconnected the battery and you just plug it into your uh, data link connector everybody's got one on their vehicle and it charges not charges it maintains all the power with a battery that's in here and of course it's got a light on here for green and if you're using it and it will go on red well you know you're discharged your battery but you know what for any extended period of time I just plug it into the outlet and you can leave it on for as long as you like and it'll keep everything maintained now these small little ones here, like I paid $10 for each, each one of these on sale and they're probably worth $10 and that's about it. 
I find they're not that reliable to tell you the truth and as the years go on by well they're just not that good and it's hard to explain why they're not that good but a lot of times they'll just stop and maybe they got to reset themselves or something but they just stop especially one like this which I think was ten dollars as well and it worked for a long time it still does work but you know what I just don't like these transformer type that don't actually well they don't shut off very much very good so this one here I like the best out of all of them for charging a battery up and I like to take the battery right out of the vehicle to charge because I've noticed there's a big difference between putting a charger on with the battery cables attached compared to taking the battery out or just taking the cables off and charging it in the vehicle. I've noticed a huge difference and this is the one that I like. So let's go out to my uh, shed where I have the uh, motorcycle and uh, small little uh, utility battery on the charger and I'll show you what I have there and I really like these two units as well. Well let's go in the shed here and uh, I'll show you inside and here this is the motorcycle battery hooked up now this particular brand here CTEK guys this is one terrific charger and I'll uh, I'll just show you here and you know it says motorcycle vehicle and also charging in cold weather now I've had this for about 10 years and you could see it's starting to get like some corrosion around the base and everything but you know what it is a terrific brand does a terrific job and the other one I'll show you here is on my wall so you have to go all the way down here and this is it right here and that battery charger there maintainer called uh, battery tender that's pretty much my go-to now. I won't buy any other. It's foolproof, spark proof. You can't hook it up wrong. It is just terrific. So, should you get this? Let's talk about should you buy one of these battery tenders. Well, should you buy one of them battery tenders? Now that's a brand name and all you who watch my channel for a long time know that I don't sell anything. I'm just reviewing things that I've bought myself and my experience with it. Now I do watch a lot of YouTube like all of you do as well and I have run across so many of my friends on YouTube that have bought low cost chargers like $10 chargers and maintainers and that kind of stuff. Well two of my buddies they had fires in their small little uh, uh, like shop where these things just melted up and uh, you know it didn't burn their shop down or anything but they all got melted and distorted and you could tell that there was like an internal fire electrically inside of them and you know you only get what you pay for right so that little battery tender junior I believe it's like three quarters of an, of an amp maintaining charge that's all you really need you don't need no big fancy equipment as far as I'm concerned there are specialized batteries out there that, you know, I guess you have spe specialized equipment. But generally, I really like that battery tender. There's different models of them, and some are waterproof, and some are bigger. Some are, you know, the, but that's about the smallest one there. And I think I paid on sale like 35 bucks. I think it was like $35 many years ago. And every winter, it, it's flawless. It just does its job, and that's that's all you want. But for the rest of these, if if I want to charge up a battery, this is the only thing that I use. I don't use anything else, because when you think about it, you try to charge up a battery, you know, even on an amp or two amp or three amp or four amp, that's that's four amp an hour. If you're down a hundred amps, how long is going to take you to charge that thing up, right? So I use this. They've been using these on the farm for years and years and years. They work to do their job and they're heavy. It's a big heavy transformer based unit. It's not Mickey Mouse and I think I paid, well it's been a long time, well over 10 years. I think you can still buy them today for under 150 bucks. They're well worth the money. 
And when you change your battery, yeah, put one of these uh, maintainers on that keeps your system completely energized so that the vehicle doesn't even know that you've changed the battery. And on some vehicles, well, if you don't do that, you're going to have all kinds of problems. Fault lights or vehicle not running right. There's all kinds of problems that can be caused because your battery was taken out. Or if it gets completely discharged. Well, at that point, well, it really doesn't matter, right? But I'd like to know how many of you have run across somebody in a parking lot and their battery is completely discharged and they just want a boost, right? Well, you know, th there's been so many instances of people hooking up the cables wrong and this kind of stuff. <laughs> the poor guy got the vehicle started, but the vehicle that was the boosting vehicle, well, it don't start no more now. So, I mean, yeah, there's all kinds of, uh, you know, risks involved in using a set of jumper cables to boost a, a battery. Them small little booster packs that you see, you know, them ones that just got small little cables on the end that hook on, I think they're terrific. I don't have any of them, uh, but uh, I see that a lot of people use them and you can boost a vehicle no problem with them. This one here, yeah, you have to plug into your uh, electric outlet. But, uh, you know, when you think about it, a lot of people seem to go back many, many, many years, at least if you're my age, and they think it's just okay today to just boost the vehicle and let your alternator do all the charging. Because if you have a, you know, like a battery that's completely discharged and you're only 10 minutes away from home, how much of a charge do you think you just got? Well, you didn't get too much of a charge if you're only 10 minutes away. I don't care what kind of an alternator you have. And uh, so there's some things you could think about. And for me, how many people actually take the battery cables off, put a uh, maintainer on, and then charge. Most of the people that I know, they actually just put the charging cables right on it. And for me, there's too many unknowns. I'm not an expert, I'm not an automotive technician, and for me, there's too many things unknown. How do I know that this might not have a malfunction and have all kinds of high voltage going down them lines? I don't know, right? So, I mean, I like to play everything on the safe side if I can, especially if it's not my vehicle. So, but overall, these ones here, yeah, you know what, for $10, I'd kind of pass on them. So far, I have not seen any problems on the battery tender brand. Like I say, I'm not trying to sell anybody anything, but that's the only brand that I will uh, use out in the future because I have so many friends that have used that particular brand and you know the small little one the battery tender junior there and have had great success like I have so thanks for joining me here today I hope you found this informative and uh, if you haven't seen this channel before well you're welcome to subscribe come back again and let's have some more fun cheers